Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Good Vibes News with Francis and Kelly. Today, we are going to be speaking about mindfulness and all of the easy, simple ways that you can walk through your daily life being mindful. But first, we're going to take a small pause and breathe into it and be mindful of where our center is. Francis. Hello everyone and welcome to the space. Please take some time to close your eyes. We're going to breathe in and out. In and out. In. and out. And now we're going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Open your eyes and take a deep breath in. Exhale and shake it all out and welcome to the space. Sit tall and stand tall or lay tall, whatever you feel. That's right. Oh, how'd you feel, Kelly? I feel good. I feel good, I feel good and balanced. Now we're going to talk. So about do I. And you know, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. I was just saying, so do I. And, you know, I love that we did that because it gives people an idea on just how to take a pause. This is a pause that you can take any time during the day, multiple times throughout the day. Yes. And it's a perfect way to begin understanding mindfulness. Because sometimes mindfulness is simply knowing when to take a time out. Like we all need that. Just so true. And ground and just breathe for a minute. And we can really, truly get through anything if we just stop and breathe for a minute. It clears your mind. Clarity is a good thing. I couldn't... I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. We get so caught up in the daily routine that we never even actually pause to think about our breathing. We get so caught up in the go, 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 go. And, you know, the anxiety level and the temperament just continues to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase until we walk around like this. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yes. Oh, yes, everything's great. Yes, I had a great day, but we're really like this. <laughs> right. You know. Right. And so when we say we, yeah. pay attention to your body, pay attention to your breath, that's what we mean. Because as we go through the day, we tense, different things tense, your jaw clenches, whatever, you're tensing up. And if you're tensing up, then you're probably not breathing very deeply either. It's probably more like that shallow breathing. And so be mindful of that. Pay attention to that. Listen to your body and relax it and just take a few breaths. It only takes a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And it does one. Certainly, certainly. The, yeah. The tensing up is, is not good because as we know, it can lead to physiological problems for us. 
you know, when we walk around and we're tense and we're carrying all this tension, you know, we now put ourselves at risk for injury. You know, you, you, you hear stories of, oh, I just went to reach for the piece of paper and I don't know what happened to my back. You know, you hear um, stories of people having um, dental issues because, you know, they find themselves grinding at night and stuff. So they've ground down their molars, you know, um, but just having a little pause is really, really helpful. And the more people do this, the more it will become second nature. And yes, granted, you know, we did it with our eyes closed, but you can do this mentally if you're ever in a situation that is completely chaotic so that you can prevent yourself from being swept up with the chaos, you know, or a situation, we've been in those hostile situations, Kelly, where, you know, people are just talking at us and they're not necessarily talking nicely and, you know, they bat us and we want to bat them back. But, you know, just sitting there and smiling and doing this mentally will help to lower your own stress level and formulate a response, whether it's, your exit or a response back to that person um, that will help to diffuse the situation for you because it's really about you. We can't change others, but we can change ourselves and how we respond yes. and control our own narrative. Absolutely. And it's a choice. It's all about a choice. And so again, being mindful is to choose to pay attention to the, the choice you make. And um, I was actually reminded of the intent mantra when you were talking about being in chaos and needing to keep your eyes open while you breathe, right? Because part of the mantra is that I will remain calm and balanced even through chaos. Yes. And that's really what yes. that means in that mantra is to just, you know, be aware of your surroundings and take that pause. And be like, okay, I have a choice here. I can either let this chaos carry me away like the rapids, or I can remain balanced and centered, and I can be in control of my reactions, my actions, because it is a choice. A lot of times we call it a knee-jerk reaction, but it was still a choice. It was just that split-second decision instead of being mindful about your decision. And so, and, and that's the point of our show tonight is to help people understand the simplicity of being mindful. We don't want it to be complicated. We don't want it to feel like it's something that you can't reach that's unobtainable. Um, you really can pause and choose a different way to feel or act or view whatever is in front of you whatever is going on around you. And also ironically, um, with what we're saying, and I really hadn't planned on bringing up um, the book that I'm writing, but last night in the middle of the night, I was woke up from a dead sleep and started writing. And I read it this morning and it was actually about relationships between um, like, you know, spouses and boyfriend and girlfriend couples, right? Um, so it was a guidance for them that I was writing specifically for, but I realized as I was rereading it today that this can apply to parents and how they deal with their children and the interaction with their children or really virtually anyone. And what I wrote, the point of what I wrote was that when you find yourself doing that tit for tat, where it's you're one upping or comparing or throwing that, that past stuff up at each other. That's when you should become aware that you've already gave up your control and your power. Because mm -hmm. if you choose to lower your standards to that situation, you've already given up your control. You've already made up your mind that this is gonna be a battle instead of, I'm gonna move out of this energy with dignity and grace, right? Like we use that expression, um, 
right. that we're we're not going to dignify that with a response. And then this there's this th thing inside of you that just eats at you that's just like, but but but, you know, I feel like, right? I should defend my honor or I should correct this notion that somebody has about me that I don't think is right or whatever it is. And so we really, really want to say something, but actually to choose to not say it, to choose to walk away, and whether that means for a few minutes, a few days, or for good, that's, that depends on your situation. But the, there is a choice to be made, and you can either choice to remain or choose to remain in that chaos and do that tit for tat, or you can choose to walk away with your dignity and grace and to hell with what everybody thinks, right? To hell with it because you shouldn't dignify it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you back to many experiences that, you know, I've had in my life and, you know, what brought me to the realization that Words that are uttered, you know, in chaotic situations are not the best reflection of my own personal self, and they're not a reflection of who I am. So it's, it's really important for me during that time of chaos to be mindful that the chaos is going on, but be mindful of what I'm doing so that I don't give into it and I don't feed into it because you see, words, once they're out, you can't stuff them back in, can you? No. Once they're out, no. they're, they're out. You can say, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and really be sorry, but the words are still out. They cannot be unheard. They cannot be unremembered. Right. Um, so I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. somebody that when I find myself in a situation where it's going, you know, tit for tat I just recognize well nobody can you know nobody's being heard at this point this is like an ongoing game of tennis but there's no there's no love you know it's just boom 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 and we really start to sway away from what the real issue is um because we've gone from looking at the issue to now going to tit for tat because we want to one up so the, the, this, you know, this little pause technique is very, very helpful, um, very helpful for many people who are going to work or, and are very unhappy with their work environment. Um, I know people who literally like dread before they open up the door, maybe taking the one minute that it took us to give yourself that gift of a pause so that you can prepare your mind before you step in um, to that environment. Just in, in so many things, driving, driving. I've learned now that, you know, if I'm on the road, I play a little game with myself. If, it, if there's a lot more traffic um, than I would like or that I'm comfortable with, the game I play is to see what, what's out there that I haven't seen before, even if it's a route that I travel all the time. You know, I don't, you know, I've gone away from like gripping that steering wheel and telling, saying, you know, saying to people, come on, come on, even though nobody can hear you because they're busy driving their own vehicles. You know, I don't do all that, ah, beeping, get out of my way. I just, you know, play that little game, look at the different cars, how many cars of the same color are close to me, you know, just things just to calm me um, so that I can arrive at my destination um, calm and centered and actually enjoy my ride, enjoy my moment on this earth. Because right. when it's taken away, it's taken <laughs> away. There's no do-over. Yes, that's a very good point. Because you chose, you consciously chose that you didn't want to be showing up for work, feeling anxious and stressed or angry or irritated or any of those negative vibrations. You made a choice, a conscious choice that was being mindful, you know, and you also said the word happy, which is another thing, mm -hmm. right? Because people don't make us happy just like people don't make us sad. We choose 
what we're going to do with it, right? So joy comes from within and also hurt comes from within. So we choose to walk away from those people that hurt us, right? That, that don't have the compassion with their words and their thoughts, and they're not being mindful of what they're doing with their actions. We choose that. Because if somebody doesn't choose it, it's just chaos everywhere, right? If it's all competition mm -hmm. instead of compassion, what kind of a world are we living in? So, I mean, it really goes back. I love that Michael Jackson song, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at the man in the mirror, mm -hmm. right? That's, That's so right. good for me. Because we all say, oh, I'm just one person. I can't make a difference. Oh, yes, you can. One, one spark is all it takes to light all the torches. One That's spark. Right. And if you don't want to be that spark, and, and I don't want to be that spark, and nobody around us wants to be that spark, what are we doing? Are we, are any of us enjoying life? Are we living it to its fullest? No, we're just doing the nine to five grind. We're living by that. How's it go? You live, you live, you die, and you pay taxes or something like that. Like Some, something like that something yes like that. yeah it's a really yes. negative and, way to look at life. And somewhere in between yeah <laughs> and somewhere in between you might get to eat <laughs> you know yeah so true way. kelly it all the power of one is huge because that one starts with mm. you mm. right you know you, you you talk about compassion but we are you know in order to be able to give compassion we have to practice that compassion with ourselves. Oh, if right. we don't give that compassion <laughs> to ourselves, how can we then give it to others? How can we recognize what it is mm -hmm. so that when those around us are acting out, we can see them through compassion and have the grace to walk away and not view it as, Oh, you're walking away because you're a coward, or you're, you know, you're walking away because you don't like confrontation. No, you're simply walking away because you're being compassionate and you recognize that nothing can be sorted at this moment in time. Right. I mean, it's a, if it's a stalemate, it's a stalemate, right? Yeah. There's nothing else you yes. can do. You should walk away. And that's like the true meaning of Jesus saying, turn the other cheek. Jesus never said, let everybody yes. treat you like you're a doormat. He said, turn the other cheek. Make a conscious choice yes. to walk away. You can still say yes. no first. You can still say, no, yes. I will not allow you to treat me this way. And I will not allow you to bring me down to your level. I wish you well, and I choose to walk away. That's what turn the other cheek really it's really. It Exactly. It never ceases to amaze me because you just gave such a great explanation of turn the other cheek. And, you know, people hear again that the power of words, people hear turn the other cheek and the assumption that is being passed down from generation to generation is really like you don't react, you don't do anything about it, almost like you just lay like a doormat. Mm -hmm. But that's not really, that's not really what it is. No. You know, you've got to recognize mm -hmm. when it's going to be appropriate for you to get your point across so that it can be heard. And in the, 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 the energy of chaos, it's not going to be heard. And all that's going to happen is you're going to end up coming out of yourself. You know, I know that I've said many things that I regret that I can't take back. Right. Right. You just feel the fire. Uh, yeah. When you say things, yeah. you just feel the fire. And sometimes you also have to have that discernment to know that you're never going to be able to get your point across. Some people you just exactly. can't. You're never going to be able to say your piece. So you might as well just accept it and move on unless you want to pour more, more gas on the fire, right? So 
Yeah. I mean, again, it goes back to being mindful of your own actions and your and choosing compassion for yourself that you're just not going to be in that energy because nobody feels good when they're being confrontational like that. It really doesn't make us mm-hmm. feel better to try to shove our opinion yeah. down someone else's throat when they don't want to hear it. You know, it doesn't make us feel better. Um, though that is what we're trying to gain by doing it. We just need to really be more more uh, aware that it really isn't going to make us feel like when you and I agree on something it we it's called vibing right we call it we're vibing together mm-hmm. we vibe yes together, yeah. right we it's like the name of our show good vibes right mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. vibing mm-hmm. Yeah. but if you and I were disagreeing <laughs> we could continue to disagree over and over and over but we're not having good vibes <laughs> you know it's not the mm-hmm. vibe I want it's not the vibes you want so why are mm-hmm. we putting our energy into that? Why I don't know. I don't. I don't understand that part. That's the one part I still haven't figured out about the human condition. What is it that makes it okay in our mind to cross those boundaries and say those things that would hurt each other that we can't take back, we can't undo, we cannot ever heal that kind of a wound. What is it in us that makes us need to do that sometimes? Like, I'm guilty of it. I've done that in the past where I said something that I can never, ever remove and take back. And you can say a thousand sorries, but it's still not going to fix it, you know? And then, and there's other people that I know that they don't think twice about it. They really don't think twice. It's that. Split second thought is all they care about. That split second thought of saying whatever is in their mind and letting it fly out of their mouth like vomit and be hurtful and vile. And I'm just like, how can you do that? How can you, especially when it's people we claim to love, you know? Like people don't really understand what love is if you're willing to do that to people. You don't know what love is. Yeah. Or you wouldn't do that. When you figure out (laughs) what it is that makes people tick, um, let let me know. Because it really is, I I truly feel that the communication and words are the real foundation of most, if not all, of society's problems. You know, is is it the primal animal instinct in us? that feels that, okay, someone's coming at me, so it's a survival thing. You know, I, I, I've tried to suss it out, even for myself, I've tried to revisit those moments where I said the things that I said that I now can't take back. And I, I, I still can't tap into what that emotion was. What I do know that's consistent is that it's almost like I got, I just got swept up you know, like the big wave comes and it just whoops, swips you off. The next thing you know, you're in the water. It, 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 it just feels like I got swept up. And that's why I, I'm so happy that I better understand how to take these mini mindful pauses because it prevents me from being swept up. It creates this shield, boom, recognize what's going on, right. pause, plan my exit strategy. Yeah. Um, And there's something else that you said, Kelly, that is so true. There are those people that you could say what you had to say till you were blue in the face and nothing's going to change or it would just become worse. Um, Those are really difficult situations. In those situations, I like to write my response and burn it or write my response I wet it, get it all shredded up so I can get all my, you know, get all my anger out. And I like to write in pencil so I can, you know, press really hard, you know, as I'm writing. Cause you know, cause I, cause I need it out of my body. You know, I don't want to wake up the next day and this is aching and that's aching. Cause guess what? It wasn't aching before, you right. know? So I'll do things like flush it down the loo and envision it 
you know, <laughs> dissolving and going away. Yeah, because I already know that. That's actually a spell. To go back. Oh, it is. It's actually a <laughs> See, this is the good vibe show where we're also bringing you some spells. But here, but here's the thing. See, people, people attach spells to witches and Wiccan and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, mystery, occults. But the thing mm-hmm. is, they are teaching that because they understand that's something everybody can do. Because thought matters, Mm -hmm. words matter, and that includes writing it on paper. And so because Mm -hmm. they all have emotion attached to them, they create. So we are all witches in the sense that we are all creators. Mm -hmm. And everything we say Mm -hmm. and everything we think with that feeling attached to Mm -hmm. it is manifesting and creating Mm -hmm. the life around us, right? So they actually teach Mm -hmm. you to write it down and either burn it or put it to water to give it back to the elements because it makes you mm-hmm. feel better to release it That's because right. you sometimes you need to say your part right you need to release mm-hmm. it. that's that component i'm going to figure out so that we don't need that anymore necessarily i hope mm-hmm. <laughs> i think i'm going to figure that out that's like my final equation right is that one component? Yeah, I'm like I'm like a math scientist. That's my final equation in understanding the human condition. Um, because you're right. Sometimes we really just need to get it out, right? We don't know mm-hmm. why, and it's it's not. All, I mean, it it can be multi layered with like sometimes you do feel threatened, and so you say those things yeah. that are mean or hateful or hurtful to someone else. But it's also the truth, right? Like maybe it's the damn truth, Mm -hmm. but the way you delivered it Mm -hmm. hurt like hell, right? Hurt Mm -hmm. that other person Mm -hmm. because you felt threatened. You wanted them Mm -hmm. to feel threatened as well. You wanted them to feel some pain Mm -hmm. because you felt pain. So we've got to figure out what that is so that we can flip it to where we're just as determined and headstrong and have that drive to make each other feel compassion and joy, right? You just made me feel joyful. I want to make you feel joyful, right? We need to go back to that part of it. We need to figure out how to flip that. And it starts with being mindful in yourself, right? Be compassionate to yourself. Care about your drive to work. Care about how stressed you're going to be when you get there. Because you're right. If you're stressed out today, your body's going to hurt tomorrow. Because all of your cortisones raised Mm -hmm. in your body from all of that stress and all that adrenaline. And so when your cortisone levels get high, your body starts saying, oh shit, mayday, mayday, mayday. And all kinds of things are happening. Right. Right. And then the next day you reach for a piece of paper and you throw your whole damn back out. And you're like, what did I do to do that? All I was doing Mm -hmm. was reaching for a piece of paper. But the (laughs) day before you were stressed out as hell. So be mindful. Stressed out. Be mindful. Stressed out, carrying all the stress from goodness knows how long along the way. And, put, and then that day, the, the paper just did it. Yeah. Right. So funny you talk about spells because we are all creators, right, Kelly? And we in our life are using spells without realizing it because think about it you're going out with the guys you're going out with the girls you know you're putting on perfume because you want to smell unique because what is that that's an attraction right so if you can be mindful in choosing the perfume or the scents that you know appeals to you that you find sexy you know, or you find attractive, why can't you also be mindful in how your body is reacting to situations so that you can change it? Be mindful in how you take care of yourself. Be mindful in how you think, what you think. Be mindful in what you speak. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of cancel that universe lately. (laughs) Yeah, 
I don't even say can cancel anymore. I just like automatically cancel it out in my own mind by flipping it to a, a more positive thing, right? Yeah. Right. It's just become right. where I catch it and I flip it. I catch it and I flip it. Yes. So I don't even have to do cancel, yeah. cancel, cancel anymore. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, no, over here. <laughs> but uh, that's right. Yeah. It, uh, but you said water earlier before you end up in the in yes the I did and um yes spirit works with me through song a lot and so I heard that song uh, shove me into shallow water before I get too deep oh that's right before I get too deep I remember that song shove me in hey, hey. the shallow waters yeah. before I get too deep so I had to bring yes that. I remember that that's <laughs> that's from that's from our time yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's from you know yeah. that's right yeah yeah it's from back in the day that's a good one but yeah it reminded me of that so I just had to bring that up too real quick <laughs> when you were talking about the chaos you know, to whether you want to be in the chaos or not. I'm like, man, that's perfect. Perfect. Definitely. Definitely. And water is so, water is so extremely powerful. Without and water, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, it can be Without very water, powerful. there's nothing. Or it can be very. really dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. Deep water mm -hmm. can be dangerous. That's the chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the so, different the, it and it, it symbolizes almost the emotions right because oh, you know i personally and this is my thought i personally see love and hate as the same emotion just the different spectrum that's so right. you've got the band yeah, and on yeah. one side is love and the other side is hate. yeah and it just boom it can it can flip at any time so right. i always try to keep it in the middle right towards the avenue mm -hmm. of love even if that means removing myself and I don't I don't see I don't look at myself when I remove myself as though I'm losing because the most important thing is for me to know whether or not I'm right doesn't matter what anybody else knows but what I think right because it's your truth it's your truth it's my and truth everybody has their yeah. their right to their truth and their opinion and as long as we're going to give that to other people we should give it to ourselves as well Yes. It's your truth. Yes. And that's all that matters. Yeah. You know your truth. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you and the universe. And we never thought to put ourselves. Yeah. We never thought to put ourselves first, right? We're right. conditioned from right when we're young that your yourself is second, but yourself has to be first because in learning to understand self, can you then learn to understand others? others right so if you never really look at yourself or understand yourself or know yourself or form a relationship with yourself how then can you really form genuine relationships with others right. you're just you're just moving right. along right you know do you want to go to this restaurant yes but really you despise the restaurant because you don't eat the food right it's not a realistic right. interaction yeah you know yeah, you but, need to be true to yourself and true to others. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, that kind of goes back to that that little choice that we make. Like, do we want to give other people happiness and joy, you know, because we've received it from them or give them more of the chaos because that's what we've received from them? And that choice in that. Um, it's that balance, like you were talking about, that yin and yang principle, right? Mm -hmm. and, and meeting in the middle somewhere. And what is it that in the emotion of it that makes us want to be defensive or, or upset that someone has done something to hurt us? At our core, it's really because we're disappointed in them that they would do that because we wouldn't, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we want from people mm -hmm. what we put out. We want to see that. We want to receive that from them. But we're not always going to receive that 
from everyone that we give it to, you know, um, just like there's those people pleasers in the world that are very big givers, mm -hmm. nurturers, and they rarely mm -hmm. receive. And then on the other hand of that, you've got the mm -hmm. narcissist who is take, take, mm -hmm. take, and put everybody down. And, you know, we need that balance between those two. We got it. And I call it a Goldilocks principle where it's just right, you know, yeah. where everything's just right. Because you yeah. do need to say, no, I'm not going to let you treat me that way. But then walk away. Don't be confrontational about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you also mm -hmm. don't want people to try to allow people to change you, you know, because again, it's your choice to change and mm -hmm. not be that loving, nurturing, mm -hmm. people pleasing person anymore. And then your heart gets harder. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's about really like, loving yourself, loving others, and finding that middle ground where we have a clear line. We don't let people cross. And that's another term we use that a lot of people don't understand is to have clear boundaries, right? What does it mean to have that line in the sand? So, so many people don't really understand that. It seems so complicated to them. But it's just really about what are your truths? What are your core values yes. of how you will allow others to treat you gauged on how much you love yourself? How much compassion and protection do you apply to you versus that you apply to others? I think we really- Yes, boundaries. Sorry, go ahead. So I did hear you. I was just yeah. saying we really need to you know boundaries. Boundary. Yes, we we do, um, because what you said is one hundred percent accurate. Boundaries are really your truth. It has been overcomplicated, and people hear boundaries and it they associate it with let's say a work environment because you know the professional boundaries. You don't do this. You don't do that. But really boundaries start with you like what are your truths you know what is okay for you right and it is only when you are living your truth can you have joy and you know we we dread we dread saying to people that we care about i don't like it when you do this yeah but my goodness imagine mm -hmm. If you were just comfortable enough to say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the person that really likes to wash my dish right after I'm done. You know, when I see the dish sitting in the sink, it does something to my body. You know, the other person may actually make a joke out of it and say, oh, I didn't realize that. And you'll notice a turn instead of in the middle of chaos, you're screaming and you always leave the dishes in the sink. It's so out of context. <laughs> Right. right. So now they're right. going to come back at you with something else that's completely out of context. You know? yeah. So boundaries are so important. They are. And, and that brings me um, to another thought here, too, that goes with this, that we're always so busy thinking we need to fix something in ourselves. If, like, say, like you used the example of the dishes. If someone is bothered by the dishes being dirty, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them that needs to be fixed or calmed down, right? And just like, you know, the, the uh, we were talking earlier about OCD, people that would get labeled OCD, when they really oh, just yeah. care very much about things having order and organization, yeah. right? Yes. Like some people right. just really care. And it brings them joy to have that order. I mm -hmm. mean, it really brings them the sense of accomplishment to have those things nice and tidy and organized. Whereas other people don't like organization. They, they have what they call uh, an organized mess, right? My mother used to use that reference mm -hmm. in her office. Her office was the only room in the whole house that was an organized mess, right? She knew where stuff was, but it looked like chaos in there. 
and mm -hmm. don't dare come in there and mess up her set, right? Because she knows where she put her mess. Everything, <laughs> everything, right? But it's her mess and she likes it that way mm -hmm. and she needs it that way for some reason. So to come in and clean up mm -hmm. her stuff is not respecting her boundaries, is not respecting That's right. her, her needs to feel whole, right? Her, her needs to feel mm -hmm. accomplished. So it's not always about we need to fix something in us. And more often than not, it's really about just honestly seeing the other person for who they are and accepting that. Mm -hmm. Acceptance mm -hmm. is such a huge hurdle for people because we've been like trained that we, we all need that list, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're going to have boundaries, they're on a list, they're on a sheet of paper. It's not going to be the same boundaries for every person. So it's not the same acceptance for, for every person, except in the sense that you just truly accept them for whoever they are right? Some people don't like smoke. Other people are smokers. And then there's those smokers that are in the middle that, you know, respect other people's boundaries. Like myself, for example, I, after I'm done smoking, or excuse me, after I'm done eating, I love to go smoke a cigarette. I smoke in my house mm -hmm. in one particular room. I'll step away from the table and come smoke that cigarette in this room, right? That specific mm -hmm. room. I'm not going to let my smoke go all up in my family space while they're eating their dinner. That's rude. Mm -hmm. It's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I'm respecting their boundaries, right? So yeah. it's really just about learning compassion for yourself and others. And, you know, truly accepting I'm this way and that's how they are. Don't try to change people. Mm -hmm. Don't think you need to change everything about yourself acceptance that's what gonna... you said acceptance that's what's going to make the world <laughs> love each other again acceptance it is it is you said acceptance and you know the, this this interesting thought process came to mind in how our physical body accepts us so we've got our left hand and we've got our right hand and they've got fingers and a thumb but you put them together, or if you measure them, they're not equal. Mm -hmm. However, they work mm -hmm. seamlessly together. They don't fight each other when we need that bilateral hand movement. They work seamlessly together. They, they just, they accept. Even when one part of our body is compromised, the other parts of our body kick it up a notch and right. accept that that part is compromised. Right. and work even harder you know in if we if we as these wonderful human creatures that we are could just could take it back to the basic instead of viewing what is different as otherism or as something that requires fixing because that's the thing fixing it would be such a much calmer and a much more beautiful journey. Yeah. Letting go yeah. of some of that control, learning to understand mm -hmm. your ego and how to balance and feed your ego in a way that's actually going to be beneficial for you and better for you than mm -hmm. feeding your mm -hmm. ego through the negative where you don't really actually grow, you just become stunted. You might lose your voice because you were able to yell the loudest, but what's really been accomplished? Nothing. It's yeah. only until the next time. Yeah. You know? But words are just words are in it, words are interesting. Words are really, really powerful. Words make peace, words make wars. You know, I want to be on the side of words making peace, making peace within myself for myself and what I manifest on a daily basis for my life, making my words are also a reflection of my thoughts. So I've got to keep those thoughts positive and it can sound very overwhelming, but it's actually very simple, you know? 
the alarm the alarm clock goes off and you're not ready to get up yet but you have to because you've got an appointment you know I was very much because I'm not a morning person so I was very much a oh goodness gracious not again I'm so tired so now I, I, I do say my I'm so tired because some habits are, are difficult to break. I'm so tired, but I know I'm going to be filled with energy as the day goes on. I add that in there so that I can start to change, you know, the vibration of that of that thought. Yeah, because so, it's not so, all about so, me. It's Pollyanna, yeah. Yeah. right? We're not saying be a Pollyanna about everything. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we're going to get no. tired sometimes, or we're going to really dread some appointment we have to go to or whatever, but just try to follow it up with something more positive, you know, yeah. after the appointment, yeah. I'll get ice cream, hell, whatever. Yeah. There you go, there you go, there yeah. you go, and we're going to be confronted with people who really do, um, do get on our nerves and do get us going, and people that we don't like, and that is perfectly all right, too. You know, there was um, all, uh, pain in the ass um, is a, a, a term that's used very, very frequently. And I've, I've heard it a lot. And I also use that term a lot. I used to refer to it as PETA, P-I-T-A. Oh, my gosh, that person is such a PETA. Um, but I've actually made a conscious decision to stop using that term because I don't want no pains in my asses. Right. Thank you very much. I am right. a person that um, has experienced some, you know, back issues in my lifetime. So I realized that what I was saying was actually directing you. subconsciously pain to an area that I would really like to keep healthy. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Yes. And that's that's yeah. also with, I mean, like even if you don't say they're a pain in the ass, but you're just saying your negative words towards someone else, that in its in and of itself, like people might say, Well, what's the point in me being nice to other people? Well, the first point you should realize is that it's actually being nice to your body. Because since words are That's a right. spell cast, every negative thing that comes out of your mouth is actually affecting every cell in your body. So it matters whether we're nice or not, because we're physically affecting ourselves, not just that other person. You know, the words that you're putting on them, yes, you can't take them back. And yes, that hurt them. But what you just did to yourself on a cellular level was actually far worse. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from the scientific perspective, yeah. far worse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes that type of damage, you know, it's years and years and years of, you know, the pileup on the cellular damage in it can be really difficult to reverse. You know, you will have, you, you can find yourself having all these ailments of unknown origin, going from one place to another, you know, being shoved through different machines because this is hurting and you never actually get a diagnosis of what's wrong. And it could just be a result of the cumulative harshness that you have given out into the world because nobody, you know, Nobody speaks harshly with a big smile on their face in, in the midst of chaos, you know? You don't say, oh my goodness, you're such an a-hole, you know? You're saying it with, 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 with strength and with vigor and, your body, and with your body tensing. So you just add all those tense body movements, moments on top of each other. Um, it can be really disturbing. I like being nice to people because it actually brings me joy. But at the same time, I'm also not a doormat. So I, I, my way is I'm always mindful of how I interact with everybody that I come into contact with. And I continue my interaction based on their response. So if you don't accept my niceness, I don't need to come to you and to bring it to you all the time. Right. I just step back and keep moving. I also don't need to 
get into a conversation with you about why didn't you accept my niceness and my, it's not, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to me because I already know who I am as a person. I go where I'm celebrated. So I'm nice to you. You're nice to me. Great. You're not so nice to me. No problem. I keep it. I keep it moving. So, you know, what, watch out for these. You're not going to waste keep it moving on them any further you move that energy forward right ah, not that's right because there will be yeah there'll be somebody else that will that will appreciate it seriously yeah. um yeah. and what's and what's the point of even having the conversation you just see what it, 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 because so if you feel like you need to start having a conversation about why somebody isn't being nice to you, I say that's your ego speaking. <laughs> because exactly. I personally, there there are too many other people in this world for me to be nice to. Yeah, and your ego, you know, really and sometimes for your best interest, either. Yes, it's not yes. looking out for the physical exactly. physical betterment of your of your physiology right it's not yes. because i mean like think about yes. just like if if people don't understand this to really simplify it put it all the way down to the kiss principle with a simple scientific method here smile really big and see how that makes you feel there's energy exchange within your body that's happening yes. when you smile right yes and when you yes frown, yes there's a whole different kind of energy. I feel like I'm being pulled. You're being yes. pulled, drawn down. You're being pulled, drawn like I'm being down. drained. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, that's like the simplest way I can put it for people to understand that they really are affecting their own physiology by being nasty people. They really are. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. smiling makes you so much lighter. And so much more energetic. And, you know, yes. that's when you get that inner joy, right? That's where that inner happiness yeah, if, is coming from. It's from you smiling open. and being grateful yes. for things and being thankful for things. And, you know, yes. um, like we were talking earlier about everybody's so busy with their hustle and bustle that they don't see that different butterfly in the group of butterflies that just went by. They don't understand the pure bliss and honor of watching a, a herd of wild horses on their stampede, you know? I mean, the, the energy that we feel from that, that comes from within us to witness nature is, the, is mm -hmm. such an easy way for us to find our own inner joy. And so many people mm -hmm. have lost contact with that. So many people have forgotten their childlike wonders. And it's not that it was mm -hmm. immature and childish. It's that when you were a kid, you knew how to sit still and look at nature and connect with it and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And then you got mm -hmm. shoved into the societal one-line trains, you know, single file mm -hmm. lines with the blinders on. And you forget, mm -hmm. you forget and you get used to forgetting, right? You get used to it. So we have to break those chains. We have to remember mm -hmm. to enjoy those beautiful childlike wonders again, to find that inner joy so that we can shine. That, that innocence, remember looking up at the clouds and seeing the different shapes in the clouds, you know, noticing that the clouds, you know, would move um, and, and would reform different shapes, noticing that there's an extra leaf on a branch in the tree because now the tree is waking up for the season. Um, it's, it, it's so important that we find those things again because nature is our gift nature is our gift to our health for so many reasons yeah. so many reasons it's an you ever changing know. fluid canvas of art yes beautiful yeah. art and you know i know many people 
might be in spaces where they're surrounded by, you know, concrete and, you know, I say just like get a plant, you know, there are many plants, believe me, I'm not the, um, the best green thumb person, but there are many, many plants that are durable and there is nothing like sticking your hand in the soil as yeah. a grown adult and yeah. making a mess. Yeah. And it feels good because that's what's supposed to happen when you repot. It yeah. feels so good. Yeah, there's like it this is inner self-satisfaction and healing from it. But there's actually scientific evidence that our hands touching the soil and absorbing the, the microbials and such from the dirt is very uh, beneficial to us also. But um, for those people that don't like plants and that live in cities, I was just thinking about, you know, in an artistic viewpoint, just looking at the contrasts with the way that the sun shades the buildings and changes the lighting and you know, alters the way things look like a street lamp can look totally different when it's a dark night with no moon versus a full moon night or at high noon versus 6 p.m., right? The, your, the images, all of it changes if you're really looking for it. So even if you're in a very artificial city type structure with no plants around, mm -hmm. you can still find the beauty in things if you look for it. Mm -hmm. you know if you really want to see it you have the eyes to see yeah I'm so glad that you, you you spoke about like recognizing the contrast because that's another way of you know helping your senses work expanding your senses beyond what 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 we've now you know what most have now been conditioned to just see, you know, the ambience in your home can really change based on the light that you have on. I mean, say the street lamp is on and you're in the living room, but instead of having the big overhead light, you have just a little lamp, that street lamp can reflect differently into your living room, thereby changing the ambience all over again and changing your energy. And it's just, it's another way to look at these things and see what works and see what excites you that really like gets your energy going. You know, I know people who like, when they wake up, boom, they want the curtains wide open because it's part of their wake up routine. And I'm the bury my head under the covers, wake up person. And I, 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 crawl into my wake up if you know what I mean it's like okay covers down to the neck okay stretch to the left stretch to the right okay one arm mm -hmm. out you know it takes a cup of you know a cup of tea or something before I can push, <laughs> open up the curtains but paying just pay, paying attention and these are all ways these are all very practical ways of being mindful so mindfulness is not this huge thing that people, you know, that it's been made out to be. I think like they're even teaching courses on being mindful. But the reality is that there are many opportunities through our day that we're mindful. We know when we're hungry, that's mindfulness, right? You don't have coffee in your house. And you remember that on your way to work, you have to stop and get yourself a cup of coffee because you couldn't make it at home or a cup of tea or whatever. That's another way of being mindful. Now, what we're saying is do the mindfulness for your body, for your soul, so that you can draw to you the energies that are going to better serve you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Listen to that body. Like when we talk about yeah. listening to where are you tensing up or yeah whatever listen to your body the way you're stretching in the morning and you know like yeah. brushing my teeth remember I spoke about that yeah. one time before how I closed yes my you did brush my teeth so that mm -hmm. I can really tune in on other senses and you know mm -hmm. um really there's lots of so fun and simple I think fun and simple ways to tap into the self to learn to really listen to the self mm -hmm. like walking with your eyes shut down the hallway, right? Go from one room in your house to the other, 
with your eyes shut and really listen to the way the walls make one sound and where the door is makes another mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Tap into them senses mm -hmm. and really start listening to your body again. And then before you know it, becoming mindful is second nature again, the way that it was meant to be to begin with. Yes. The it's second it nature and and the added benefit, it increases that natural gift, which is your intuition that we were all born with. That's right. You know, it, 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 it really does. Yeah. I just, I just have to share, you know, my little, my little activity is dishwashing. I do like washing dishes and I like washing dishes by hand. And I really do enjoy letting everything pile up. Not because I don't want to wash the dishes, but I love like, it's my end of the evening or day routine. It's my closeout. Cause I just, I just love watching the bubbles. You know, I'm always fascinated. Like, okay, so why did this clump over here with three big ones and then this beautiful tiny little one in here. And then these are just like tiny little suds. So it's just a, it was not intentional. It's just something that I noticed that I enjoyed doing. So I pay close attention to it and allow it to be, um, my um my nighttime routine you know so while everybody's running around because they want places that have dishwasher i'm like dishwasher doesn't bother me how big is the kitchen sink that's what i want to know because i want to make bubbles me too i hate those shallow trailer type sinks man you can't get your dishes in them i hate those I no hate dishes in a shower yeah sink. i want big yeah but yeah i want Big, I want a nice big deep sink so that when the dishes are in, I can wash, I can make bubbles. I like to take my hands in and play with the bubbles to see if I can create more bubbles from the bubbles that are already in there. But the simple activity brings me such joy right. and such closure. Mm -hmm. And I also find that at that time, there could be something that's bothering me that comes to my mind. And it gives me an opportunity to either release it right. or to think about strategies in which to solve it. Right. All from washing my dishes and playing with the dish right. bubbles. Right. Because you it chose is. to take something that's considered a mundane chore and turn it into something where you could find some pleasure. And I love that you brought that up yeah. because... I, I did that with housework in general, housework, right? Um, growing up in my house, I was the only girl in the house because all of my other siblings were older and they were all gone. So a lot of times when my mom was working, I would have to do all of the household stuff, right? All the domestic chores. So when I grew up and I was a young adult, I really despised being domesticated. I didn't want to be domesticated right? It felt like I was this wild horse they were trying to force tame or something because you got to do the dishes and you got to sweep the floors and you got to mop and you got to wash the refrigerator and the laundry and blah, blah, blah. And I just, I hated it so much. And then I finally just said, and I also did not like routine exercise. Okay. That was another thing I didn't like. I don't like typical routine kind of things. I need to find some way to make it fun. So I started doing my, my domestic chores and exercising at the same time. Like when I would do the washing machine, I would do squats to pick up the laundry, stand back up, turn very, mm -hmm. very specifically, put them in the washer, you know, mm -hmm. I would do my exercise mm -hmm. as I did my chores and it made it more fun. And mm -hmm. before you know it, now I actually was enjoying doing my domesticated chores, right? But it had to be on my terms. It had to be for my truth yes. and what I felt comfortable in. And, you know, if I hadn't never found that, I would be a terrible housekeeper to this day. But I actually keep a very nice house <laughs> because I enjoy See? what I do now. Right. I enjoy what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I take right. advantage of those right. opportunities to not consider them mundane and boring mm -hmm. and 
ordinary, right? I make it something fun and extraordinary. And it was a choice. <laughs> we all have a choice, right? We could hate washing dishes or we can enjoy the bubbles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I choose to enjoy the bubbles. I do too. I like to blow them all over the place. Yeah. I love blowing the bubbles because yeah. different ways you blow the bubbles, I, that, bubbles different things, you yeah. know? Yes. Yes. And sometimes you blow a bubble and it looks like it's one bubble and then it ends up being two bubbles that are still connected to each other. I'm just, I'm always fascinated like, wow, how did it make that? And then sometimes it could even have a tiny, another tiny little one that's attached, that's trying to form, yeah. you know? But I love when you say housework because, you know, I'm all right with the housework, but my whole thing is da -da -da -da, the bathroom. The bathroom and washing the bathtub. That has always been a challenge for me. So recently, I'm all about rituals. I created a whole ritual for the day that I do clean the bathroom. And that's like the whole, you know, the deep cleaning when you're bringing everything out and you're stuff. Really so rubbing. once a week, yes. And I actually have an outfit for it. Oh yes, <laughs> because I needed to make it fun and enjoyable for me, right. you know? So I have an outfit. And I've now turned it into this game where the the backs, um, the, the tile that goes down, not the tub itself, mm -hmm. is to get it all nice and clean until I can see my reflection. And then when I see my reflection in my outfit, I'm doing my, you know, checking my muscles <laughs> and doing my modeling pose. Exactly. Oh. And <laughs> there you go. We vote. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that that's how I've made it enjoyable so that it's not a chore because at the end of the day, the bathroom's going to need to be cleaned. But right. why should I approach it stressing myself out? And yeah. especially being in that position where you're bending over, you know, if you if I'm doing that stressed out, I'm increasing the risk of causing myself an injury. So I just turned it into this fun thing, you know, where where my, you know, my little workout attire and you know uh -huh. I go all out I'm gonna see can mm -hmm. I can I do it better than I did the last time and a couple of times you know I took pictures because I was really impressed with myself who takes pictures of the bathroom wall that they have just washed down I do, I do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a reminder it's a reminder that I can I can do this I um do. so it's it's again it's changing that thought right like we were saying yeah. you know having control bring being control in control of our joy right you know being mindful i don't i don't like cleaning the bathroom but i have to clean it but hey i like doing this other thing instead let me incorporate it now it's turned into a game right you know so and just like you know you with scheduled routine exercise Right. You know, you incorporated right. that into doing your housework when you're doing your laundry. So there are just, there are, there are many, many things. Yeah. And I more hope that our viewers, <laughs> huh? I said, it's more than just yeah. the laundry, but yeah. Like when I'm vacuuming. No, but, but with everything else. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're vacuuming. It's like lunges when you yeah. vacuum. And then when you sweep, you have to squat again, you know, in order to, get the you know the stuff into the dustpan yeah so right. it's many many, many other things in my core too when i'm when i'm using the broom it's core strengthening yes. at that moment until the there squat. you go <laughs> yeah there you go there you go see yeah see mm -hmm. but i i hope our viewers kelly you know really see that there are things in their lives that they have the ability to control with their mind and their thought and their words and just start start implementing that I mean I would love to hear in our comment section you know what are some of the techniques that some of our viewers use because it is just very basic it is it really we're is. mindful about the clothes that we wear yeah yeah even, I mean, mm -hmm. even after the clothes you choose to put on each day, 
is going to either empower you or or unempower you. I don't know how to say that the right way. Disempower, disempower, or disempower you or something. Disempower, right. take it away. And just like we say, one of those things, <laughs> we say words are power and words are a spell, and that goes both ways too. Words can be powerful and hurtful to yourself or others, and words can be empowering to yourself and others. So if you get up in the morning and you tell yourself, yeah, I don't feel good today, or man, I'm, I'm really still tired. I wish I could have slept longer. Tell yourself something else that's going to make it better. Empower yourself. Give yourself a reason to be happy and joyful and lift yourself up. Encourage yourself. Don't put yourself down. Don't make up your mind that your day is just ruined. You know, make up your mind that your day is just beginning and there's so much potential left for it. I, um, there was something else too that, you know, when we were talking about ego, you know, because we know the ego, it's just like you said, it does not always have your best interest at heart, but there is, there, there is an appropriate time um, in which to call on your ego where it can really serve you well. Um, so I, you know, I just wanted to share this with people because I, you know, used to be in the public doing a lot of public speaking or doing a lot of introductions at major, major crowds. It's not my, it's not my favorite thing. I like to be the spotlight in the back, not the spotlight in the front. And one of the things that I used to do is I used to call on my ego and I used to basically visualize like my head getting big and I am confident as a result and I own it. So I would call on the ego at that point to help me exude the confidence that was needed in this situation that really wasn't my most comfortable. So there, there, there are times and places where the ego can serve you well. Um, but the ego takes a lot of work because the ego is also really sensitive too. So it can serve you like that, but it can also make you act like an ass too. <laughs> so the, the more you get to know yourself, the more you'll be able to be in contact with your ego and be able to evaluate like, where is this feeling of mine coming from? Is it coming from me, my core, myself? Or is it, is it my ego that's affected? Um, but just the mindfulness, I think, is just those are the exercises or those are the routines that become second nature that get us closer to mastering ourselves and manifesting mm -hmm. days that are filled with joy. And like we've said, it's not that it's all Pollyanna. No. It's not that we're all no. walking in fields with beautiful flowers, but what it is, is that we know the joy that is within us. So no matter what happens around us, we're able to respond without ever losing that joy that is within us because we get to control that. That's, right. you know, that's, that's, you know, that, that's my feeling. I'm very selfish when it comes to my joy very willing to share but if it's a space where it looks like it might be there might be an attempted robbery of my joy I am exiting stage left yeah it's yeah, yeah. and that's how it Sorry. should be it, yeah that's yeah. how it should be for all of us you yeah. know we we yeah. don't owe anyone an explanation and we shouldn't feel like we owe the explanation we shouldn't feel like we need to explain ourselves and we shouldn't suppress how we truly feel about something. We need to honor it. Mm -hmm. We truly do. Mm -hmm. And if they're upset about us needing to walk away and exit stage left, I guess they'll work that out later or the two of you can work it out later. But for that mm -hmm. moment, in that space, walk away. Honor yourself. Yeah. Because it does Because we really, I wish. 
I was sharing with you earlier how today I just feel completely tickled. You know, I just feel completely excited. Yeah. You know, I'm happy. You know, I hear happiness a lot, but it's always associated with things. No, I'm just happy. I can't even tell you guys why I'm happy, but I'm happy like I got Christmas presents again today. Hanukkah presents, even though I'm not Jewish. I got Kwanzaa presents, even though I don't celebrate Kwanzaa. You know, I'm just happy, you know, and I believe that it's all coming from in here. You know, it's just, I'm just happy. You know, did anything great happen today? Yes, I woke up this morning, right. healthy, in the same manner that I went to bed last night. But aside from that, okay. The delivery people showed up and brought, dropped off my two bottles of honey, but it, it's not mm -hmm. something, no, nobody showed up and said, hey, here's your brand new car, congratulations. Nobody rang my doorbell and said, I just wanted to shake your hand because I love you. Yes, yeah. I'm just yeah. happy. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I, I, the lottery. I, yeah. So, yeah. That would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But yes. We but yes. we don't need to win the lottery to be happy. Yeah. Yes. You could be, you could be happy. And if you wanted to win the lottery, imagine having that radiation, that energy field of joy, compassion, love, understanding, and how that translates into your manifestations of the things that you want in your life. You know, our words attract things to us. Our thoughts attract things to us. Right. Think positively, mm -hmm. raises your vibrational field, you attract more positive things. Think negatively, we know what happens. Right. You know? And again, back to that Pollyanna stuff, we're not saying every single thought in your head should be something positive. But for every negative thought you have, or negative feeling you have, try to find something positive to put over top of it or to add to it because we can balance it out that way you know you're gonna have bad thoughts from time to time you're gonna feel bad about things from time to time and you shouldn't feel guilty for feeling bad or having a, a bad thought you just be more mindful of how often that happens versus how often are you being more positive more uplifting for yourself or others it doesn't matter it's a symbiotic relationship so it doesn't matter who it's for you know as long as there's no harm to other people in it right so yeah, yeah. and yeah just it's for that yin for clarity's sake i'm just gonna throw this out there to any nimrod that might be listening i'm not saying if it brings you joy to be mean to kitties to go do that that's not what i'm talking about no you know, no, that, that's no, not, no, that's not true joy. No. So, and if that, if that, if that brings. Examine um, the root of that, because that's just not healthy because humans as creatures, we were not, we were not created with the first instinct of harm or hate. No. No. We're, and we were created out of love right so it, it, it instinctively it should be the first thing that we embody and we exude um but somehow it no longer is so it's really up to each and every single one of us as individuals to work our way back to love and to love ourselves again so that we can love others. Right. You know? Right. And it does start with us. You can't truly love other people if you don't truly love yourself. You just can't. I mean, you you can feel love for other people. I'm not saying you can't feel love, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like you can't actually honor <laughs> them with proper love and proper compassion, yes. and proper understanding and proper acceptance if you don't give that to yourself yeah. first, right? Yes. Yeah. And you need that. You need that because that is 
what's going to help you find the love for the people that have hurt you so that you can release that vibration. So yeah. you, are, you have to love yourself. Yeah. Well, don't love yourself like me. Sometimes three o'clock in the morning, the ice cream calls my name. And that's okay. I love myself with the ice cream, <laughs> which is okay. It just depends on how often, how often it happens. But, but at a really foundational level, you have to just like, you know, you have to love yourself and honor yourself. I think, you know, I know I mentioned ice cream, but I think about many women and many men because they, you know, they don't really talk about eating disorders in men, but eating disorders in men are really prevalent. Yeah, you know, we always hear about it in women, but many men face yeah. that. And I think about how much destruction people have done to themselves because they don't love themselves. They don't love the skin um, that they were born in or the body, right. you, you know, that they were that they were given. Right. You know, um, it, it would be absolutely. Someone else said in that body shaming them or even just society, yes. you know, showing us this little Barbie doll template yeah. we're supposed to look like or whatever as girls. Exactly. And all the guys are supposed to look like the Ken yeah. doll and whatever. Like, yes. yeah, it's something that was planted in us as a seed, as a little kid. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and the seed grows and it festers and it leads to a sense of worthlessness. Right. And yeah. it go through... Yeah. yeah, go through most of their lifetime on these horrible, harmful diets where genetically you're never going to look like you want to look because you were born to a family line that looks completely different. Right. You know, so I, 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 I think about that and that's that's why it's so important to learn how to love yourself. I've also seen people try to dress up what is the the joneses i think it, it, is it keeping up with the joneses is the term mm -hmm. so they they've attempted to dress up so right. that they can love themselves yeah. but it's actually out of their financial means so they've ended up putting themselves in a lot of debt a lot of financial issues mm -hmm. instead of loving themselves for where they are so that they could work towards where they want to be. You know, so loving yourself is, it's so important. It affects actually everything that we do. It affects our interactions, affects our finances. It actually yeah. affects the jobs that we're at. Yeah, all of our choices, right? Yeah. I know- All of our choices. I know people that will spend money they can't afford to go buy an outfit to wear to a certain event so that they can fit in and as soon as the event is over take it right back to the department store and get their money back for it because they really couldn't afford to have it to begin with they're trying and that dressing yeah. up when you said that yes the dressing an energy yes. in our mind right in our thoughts yes. we are thinking okay that we, i need to level up so if you're thinking you need to level up to fit in then you're already thinking less than of yourself. Yes. Right? That's it. Because that's the exact opposite. And my mama taught me when when we first moved back to Indiana from Arkansas, we were poor. We were dirt poor. We were lucky to have beans and peanut butter to eat daily. We were dirt poor. And my mother would take me and we would stand in the welfare line to collect the food stamps. And every single time that we went, we always dress nicely because we dress nicely daily. That's daily. Right. It wasn't a dressing up for us. That was our normal. We always dress mm -hmm. presentable and with dignity. And mm -hmm. we would stand there in the welfare line and all of the other people would have on their tattered clothes or their pajamas or whatever. I mean, they just really didn't care because they felt less than. And my mother was mm -hmm. the first one to teach me that just because you're poor does not mean you need to feel like you're poor or think like you're poor mm -hmm. because you're not less mm -hmm. than just because you're a poor kid. Mm -hmm. You are not less than. 
you will still put on your same mm -hmm. clothes because I would say to her, mama, why don't we like get something odor looking and you know, like the stuff we would normally wear to clean the house, the outside of the house or do yard work in. Why don't we wear that to the welfare mm -hmm. alone? Because I felt like we needed to dress down to fit in. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel comfortable standing out. And she said, you will stand here in this line and wear your clothes that you wear every day and you will hold your head proud. And if you stand out, you stand out because you are not going to think less than just because we're poor. And I mean, my mother was a classy lady. And when I was young, before we moved up here, we, we were well off. So she was used to the finer things in life, but she also came from poverty. So she knew the transition back and did it with mm -hmm. ease and grace and taught me and my brother to do it with ease and grace as well. You don't think less of yourself just because you're poor. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need mm -hmm. to teach our children because poverty is a sickness. It's a mental illness. Mm -hmm. If you're born into poverty, you automatically got that stamp of attitude and approval from everyone around you. And they didn't even mean to. They didn't even mean to do it, but they already put that imprint on you that you're less than. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that. Very, very powerful story, Kelly. Very, very powerful. And, it, you know, it reminds me of something else. I just want to make a plea, you know, to people who donate. You know, I, you know, I like to donate. I like to repurpose things. I, you know, I like to make sure that if I haven't worn something in two years, you know, it's, it's really time for it to go. But I'm really, really mindful of what I am putting out as donations. Um, just remember, people that may be in need, it does not mean that they have no fashion sense. It does not mean that they want the stained clothing with holes and rips that you don't, you know, that you don't want anymore. Um, people in need at that particular point in time have the same needs and the same wants that we have. So if I don't like something anymore and it's in good condition, I'll donate it. If I have something that I have ne never worn and it's still got the tag on it, I'll donate it. But if I know that I won't wear it or I won't use it because there's something wrong with it, I don't donate it because I do not wish to continue to lower people's vibrations while society already lowers them by virtue of where they are at that particular point in time. Yes, um, so I'm so glad that you you shared your story. And it is, it it really and truly becomes an illness. Um, and it becomes a generational illness. Sometimes some of these helping agencies at people's most vulnerable time remind people that they are little when people are already feeling little. The most vulnerable thing for a human being to do is to ask for help. Oh, um, yeah. So I would just, you know, if our viewers could just be, do me a favor and be mindful if they make donations to, what are you, what are you putting there? You know, if the cup has a chip on it, throw it away. Right because that cup could end up in the hands of a child, you know, and the little chips could fall in, somebody could drink from it. If you're donating it because of the chip that it had in it, then throw it away. Right. So if it's not good for you, it's not really good for anybody else. Right. You know? Yeah. And it doesn't- so if the, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say, if the food, the food banks, they have a lot of issues, you know, people leave food and then they want to donate them to the food bank after the date of expiry. The food banks cannot accept food after the date of expiry. It's, it's, it's the law. So right. 
if you're not going to use it, donate it ahead of time. You know, I mean, the, we can, you know, we open up our cans whenever we choose to open up our cans, you know, but when you're donating, be really mindful because you want to add to uplift. Right. Not take away. Yeah. yeah. And not to uplift yourself. You don't donate. Not to uplift yourself. To uplift yourself. Right. You don't donate for the tax write off so that you can look good to society that you're a donator, yeah. right? Don't be a shitty donator. Don't even donate if you're going to be shitty. Just please don't. Yeah. Because I've been that yeah. poor person that had to take that shitty food from the food pantry. We don't want it. Yeah. If you don't yeah. want to eat it, we probably don't either. And you should yeah. respect the poor people just as much as you respect yourself and the people that have plenty. Don't disrespect people because they're poor. Don't give them the stain. Agreed. Food. Don't give them the old food. Don't be shitty. Don't be a shitty donor. If you're going to donate, do it from your yeah. heart or don't do it at all. My grandpa used to say, don't do it if you can't do it right. And he meant that about anything, yeah. right? There you go. Donation right. plus. Yeah. Do yeah. it from your heart. Do it because something inside of you calls to you to help yeah. another human being. Yeah. And then it's the most yes. beautiful blessing on this planet. Yeah. It really is like you just, you, you feel really, really great inside. You know, I love, you know, in the location that I am, I have an agency that you actually go online and they'll come, you know, you schedule your time and they'll come and pick up stuff, whether it's one box, three boxes, it doesn't matter, you know, and it's so nice. I get excited when it's time for me to donate my books, you know, and it's like, I know that, you know, folks would be excited to read these books because they're not books that were from over here. And it just, it just brings me such joy to know that I'm sharing joy with someone else. Um, you know, back in the day, I used to be a, a shoe addict and a bag addict. Oh my gosh, you named the bag, you named the style of shoe. You know, I had it. I still love my shoes in my bags but I always you know when it's time to donate I always try to you know donate a set and I just I just get excited like looking at them and thinking about the memories that are associated with them and hoping that somebody else will also have those um pleasant memories um sometimes when you go to the yeah. grocery shop they'll ask you if you you know if you want to buy a box, the latest thing they did was a box of pasta or something and it was $1, you know, so I told the woman, I, I didn't want the pasta, I didn't need it. It was gonna come sit in my house, I don't really eat it like that. So when she she told me um, what it was for, um, and it was for, they had a big box somewhere else that they were putting the stuff in for the food bank. So I just used that as an opportunity just give me five boxes and I took those five boxes and then she put them in there so that, that way the food's not coming home sitting somewhere where I've completely forgotten about it and then the day before the date of expiry I'm rushing to go see where I'm going to you know donate it or worse I'm chucking it out right you know every everything is everything is circumstance and opportunity and we're all birthed with different opportunities um but opportunities ebb and flow so if you would like the universe to continue being kind and gracious to you you have to be mindful and be kind and gracious to those that you encounter in this beautiful planet of ours you know all the all the living beings, even the spiders that petrify me, I have to be kind to them, you know. So right. I have to learn to live in balance with everything and everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was just uh, reminded of how some people would maybe be thinking at this moment, but I'm a good person and all kinds of bad things happen to me. And for those people. Um, I'm going to give a word of advice and then I'm going to let you give them a word of advice and then we're going to close this out. 
for those people, I would ask you to really be honest with yourself. Really look within and ask yourself, okay, how do I talk to myself? How do I really love and honor myself? And how do I speak to anyone else, everyone else? And how do I really love and respect and honor them? And if you can honestly answer that you have done right by yourself and others, I want you to contact me. We need to talk. We need to figure That's out right. what is going on. Because in my equations, in my calculations, there's something. And I love you, but there's something that could probably be done different. Some choice that you could make another choice on. Because I know from example, what you put out, you get back. And yeah, sometimes good people have bad things happen to them. I'm not saying that if bad things happen, you're not a good person. But when it's consistent, when it's habitual, there is still a lesson for you to learn. And mm -hmm. I'm a really hard-headed person and I had to learn some lessons 10 and 12 and 20 times before I finally really understood the whole lesson. So I beg you, be honest with yourself, be real with yourself and alter the things that need altered and I bet you, you'll see a change. Well, Kelly, I, I couldn't have said it better. You know, I'm just going to simply add that being good has absolutely nothing to do with the negatives that life will sometimes throw at you. Um, there are times when life will throw things at you because it's an opportunity for you to elevate or it's a check-in to see how are you going to respond? Are you going to respond as you've, as you've always responded or have you, you know, have you learned something? So the, the idea that being good will prevent negative things from happening is, is not a realistic one. Um, I could give you a laundry list of, you know, things that are ongoing, um, but the journey of learning to love self and to be in contact with self and to be mindful helps you go through, navigate some of those things you overcome and some of them you navigate through and some of them you walk away from, but you never ever lose that joy that you have because you created it for yourself from deep within. Right. And it's always a test. Everything in life that happens to us is a test. We like to blame it on the devil. We like to blame it on whatever. But really, every single thing that happens to us is a test. Because as we grow as a soul, just like as you grow as a human being, you are tested. How much do you want it? How much willpower do you have to achieve it? And did you really learn yet so that you can go to the next grade, the next level? Just like when you're a child and you learn to walk, you fall down. You fall down. You don't just get up and start walking. You right. fall down. And then you get up and you learn to walk a little more careful. And you might fall down again. It's always a test. Everything is a test and a gauge for us to know how far we're growing, how much we're achieving. So if there are bad things happening in your life, you're being tested. Do you pass the test or do you keep staying in the same grade? The choice is yours. It's always your choice. Certainly is free will. Right. So for those people out there that bad things are happening, I love you. I hold space for you. I am here for you if you need guidance. I wish you well. I wish for all negativity to move away from me. 
and it can happen. It can. Certainly, certainly. And for those who um, have checked themselves and, you know, can actually state without an ounce of doubt that they have not done anything wrong and still have a trail of bad things, um, they should please um, get in contact and make a and make a comment because it very well could be something else. Absolutely. That would be like that rare gem that I want to study and learn more about. <laughs> Be a yeah. test subject. <laughs> In the nicest possible way. <laughs> All right. right. They'll be they'll be they'll be doing a lot for humanity. That's right. That's right. They would be like the prodigy of humanity. So we need to learn from them. We yeah. need to pick their brain and learn from them. Yeah. Um this has been kind of a long show, but I think it's been a really good show. Um, I hope that everybody else agrees. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again next week for more Good Vibes News. Be well and be blessed. Take care.